Good morning, civil engineers! We have discussed technical documentation, building materials and assemblies to building services. Now, we're going to tackle about the financial considerations. Construction costs form part of the overall costs incurred during the development of a built asset such as a building. Those costs incurred by the actual construction work themselves and on some projects may be determined by the value of the contract with the main contractor. However, the construction contract may include costs that might not in themselves be considered literal construction costs, such as fees, profits, overheads, and so on. Many projects will also include costs that is not possible to determine when the construction contract is awarded, such as prime cost sums and provisional sums. And there may be construction works that are awarded by the client outside of the main contract, such as fitting out the interior, minor alterations to the completed works, installation of equipment, and so on. In addition, the contract is likely to allow for the contract sum to be adjusted as a result. For example, of variations to the works, claims for loss and expense on fluctuations, it is because of these unknowns that clients are advised to hold a contingency. As a result, what is considered the actual construction cost of a project must be clearly defined and may not be finally determined until well after the actual construction works have been completed. This is true even if a contract is described as having a fixed price or guaranteed maximum price. Cost plans evolve through the life of the project, developing in detail and accuracy as more information becomes available about the nature of the design and then actual prices are provided by suppliers. Cost plans may include first is initial cost appraisals prepared during the feasibility study states, elemental cost plans prepared during the project brief states and carried through to detailed design. This approximate quantities cost plans prepared from the end of the day design through to tender. Pretender estimates prepared alongside tender documentation, contract sum, agreed with the selected contractor, final account, agreed once the construction, work are completed. <coughs> Other than initial cost appraisals, this all relate to the construction cost of the project rather than wider project costs that the client might incur, which could include fees, equipment costs, furniture, the cost of moving staff, contracts outside of the main works, and so on. Contingencies will tend to be highest in the early stages of the project when there are the greatest number of possible risks but can generally be reduced as better particulars about the project become available and some risks have passed or been overcome. Cost Estimate The method used for estimating actual cost will change as the amount of detail available increases. Initial cost appraisals might simply break down the overall project budget based on information provided by the client. An analysis of comparable projects in the experience of the cost consultant. Elemental cost plan may simply be the total construction cost for the project divided into the main element of the works on a percentage basis. The approximate quantities cost plan is a first attempt to measure defined quantities from drawings. It presents a more accurate pictures of where costs are distributed. In particular, it draws the attention of designer to those elements of the design that are standard and those that are not and as a consequences may be more expensive. The pre-tender estimate 
or the PTE, is the final estimate of the likely cost of the works that are described in completed tender documents. It provides a final comparison with the budget and along with a cash flow estimate that enables the client to confirm that sufficient funds are available before committing to seeking tenders. It also gives a basis for assessing and comparing tenders when they are returned. The contract sum provides the first actual confirmed price. Up to this point, all cost planning has been based on estimates. A bill of quantities is issued to tendering contractors for them to prepare a price for carrying out the works. The bill of quantities assists tenderers in the calculation of construction costs for their tender. And as it means, all tendering contractors will be pricing the same quantities, rather than taking off quantities from the drawings and specification themselves. It also provides a fair and accurate system for tendering. Best practice for the preparation of bills of quantities is set out in the new rules of measurement. The price agreed with a successful tenderer is entered into the contract as the contract sum. Unfortunately, it is fairly common for there to be a significant difference between the prices offered by the contractors and the cost consultant's pre-tender estimate. The final account includes any adjustments to the contract sum so that the amount of the final payment can be determined. Construction price and cost indices are produced for use in estimating, cost checking, and fee negotiation on public sector construction works. The complexity of construction projects, the differences in circumstances, duration, and level of specification between one project and another, and the continually changing state of the market due to fluctuation in supply and demand. Inflation and so on mean that it is impossible to give rule of thumb figures such as a cost per square meter for the likely cost of construction works. Private sectors organizations such as the Building Cost Information Service provide cost and price information to the construction industry to help estimate the likely cost of construction work. Capital Cost versus Operational Cost Construction is only a small part of the cost associated with the built asset. There may be land acquisition costs, fees, taxes, and so on incurred before construction begins and management, maintenance, and other costs once the project is completed. This may be categorized as capital cost and operational cost. Capital costs are fixed, one-time expenses incurred on the purchase of land, buildings, construction, and equipment used in the production of goods or in the rendering of services. In other words, it is a total cost needed to bring a project to a commercially operable status and might include land or property acquisition, commissions, statutory fees, consultant fees directly associated with the development, materials, plant and equipment, labor, fixtures and fittings, project insurance, inflation, taxation and financing, and internal cost directly associated with the development. Operational cost are the expenses which are related to the operation of a business or to the operation of a device, component, piece of equipment, or facility. They are the cost of resources used by an organization just to maintain its existence. It might include wages, utilities, maintenance and repairs, rent, sales, general and administrative expenses. Your drinking water system is made up of many assets, from pipes and pumps to meters and tanks. It costs money to construct, install, operate, maintain, repair, remove, and replace these assets. A lot of money. Most likely, you don't have all the money you need to do everything that should be done within your water system. You should make smart choices about where you spend your money you do have available. Asset management can help with making the smart decisions. Asset management helps you determine how, where, and when to spend your limited money. It's about maintaining a desired level of service that is what you want to provide to your customer 
at the lowest appropriate life cycle cost. Life cycle cost means total cost of ownership of an asset. The purchase price, the cost of operating and maintaining it, refurbishment, and disposal. But figuring out life cycle cost can get tricky. Sometimes, assets that are cheaper to buy end up costing more over time, especially if the asset uses energy. Let's imagine you're buying a new pump. There are lots of options out there. All pumps have the appropriate size and power seem to do the same job, which is pump water. So, why not just buy the cheapest one and save money for something else? Whole Life Cost Whole Life Costs considered all costs associated with the life of a building, from inception to construction, occupation and operation, and even ultimate disposal. This is considered a better way of assessing value for money than construction costs, which can result in lower short-term costs but higher ongoing costs through the life of the building. This can also apply to things such as design fees, where saving money on fees at the beginning of a project can be outweighed by very much higher ongoing costs through construction and occupation. <laughs>